In this short video, we're going to look at some properties of a PLOS transform. It's the first of two videos. We're going to examine translation on the S axis. So suppose that lowercase f of t is an input function to a Laplace transform. If we multiply that input function by an exponential function, and then take the Laplace transform of the resulting product, what occurs is that the output function is shifted along the x, no, s, s axis. So formally, the way we can write that out is that if we have uppercase f as the Laplace transform of lowercase f, and a represents any real number, then the Laplace transform of the product e to the power of a t times f of t is f evaluated at s minus a. And you should recognize that when you subtract a constant from the input value, the result is a horizontal shift. Uh, the graph of, if I were to graph s versus f of s, the graph of f of s minus a has been shifted a units to the right. And the way we might want to write that uh, as a reminder is that the Laplace transform of the product e to the power of a t times f of t is the Laplace transform at f, where we replace s with s minus a. So let's do a couple of examples here. Uh, so here we have e to the three power, excuse me, e to the power of three t times t squared. We're going to take the Laplace transform. And so our a value is three. So that would be the Laplace transform of t squared, and then we'll replace the s with s minus 3. So the Laplace transform of t squared is 2 factorial over s cubed, and now we just make the substitution, we replace s, s with s minus a, which is s minus 3. In part b, we have e to the power of negative 3t times cosine of 2t. So in this case, a is negative 3. So we're, we will replace s with s plus 3. So we need to find the Laplace transform of cosine of 2t. That's going to be s over s squared plus 4. And now wherever I see an s, I need to replace it with s plus 3. There's also an inverse form of this, so you just simply work it backwards. You start with f evaluated at s minus a, and so we can think of that as being the inverse Laplace transform uh, where we have replaced s with s minus a, and so the inverse Laplace transform will be e to the power of a t times f of t. Or we could just put that all on one line there. So let's use that uh, to uh, evaluate a couple of inverse Laplace transforms. So in part a, and I'll just focus on a for now, we will do some uh, partial fractions We'll go through all the details, but we can break that up as two fractions, so then two inverse Laplace transforms. So I went ahead and put the coefficient out in front. So we can think of 1 over s minus 3 and 1 over s minus 3 squared uh, as my uh, shifted function. So. Um, So in particular, 1 over s squared, where s is 
been replaced with s minus 3 is going to be, well, now a equals 3. So I'm going to get um, these, what is the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared? That is uh, t. And so we're going to have e to the 3t times t. All right, here is another inverse. This is part B of that same example too. And what we're going to do is a little bit different in the denominator. We can't factor it, so we can't use partial fractions. But what we can do is complete the square. And if we complete the square, then it's going to be um, a combination of shifted sines and cosines. So we've completed the square now. And so I can think of the uh, denominator then as s plus 2 squared. So we'd have a shift there uh, plus radical 2 squared. So now it starts to look like sines and cosines. In fact, if I just write this as two fractions, factor out the uh, coefficients here. This first one is almost uh, the shift of uh, cosine of radical t. The only thing that's missing is that we have s plus 2 quantity squared. So I need s plus 2 in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is add 2 and then subtract 2. So when I add 2, now I've got the shift of a cosine here, and uh, then this will just be some constant multiplier times the sine. And in fact, I can combine these. I've got like terms in these last two terms. So they'll get combined together. Uh, so let's see what we can do there. So again, this would be uh, the the Laplace tr inverse Laplace transform of the form s over s squared plus radical 2 squared, where s had been replaced with s plus 2. Over here, the only thing I've done is, well, there's two things I've done. I said 1 half times negative 2 would be negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5 thirds should be plus 2 thirds. I think I need to have a plus sign here. Be careful. And uh, then I put in a radical 2. So it would have the form of the Laplace transform of sine of radical 2. And since I multiply by radical 2, I have to also divide by radical 2. And so what does that do for me here? So I'm going to have a, my a value is uh, negative 2. So I have e to the negative 2t. And then this is cosine of radical 2t. And I just want to make sure I didn't lose a sign somewhere. I mean, there's no question that this is about one half. And then I added two, so then I have to subtract two. That gives me a negative one, negative one, and five thirds is plus two thirds. All right, uh, so now what do I have here? Uh, I just have the s plus 2 squared. I don't need to have any other plus 2. So this is a shifted uh, sign. So uh, it's going to have, and it's also going to have uh, a negative 2 for a. So let me just make all of these plus. Eight, 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 eight. 
All right, so we have e to the negative two from the shift and sine of radical two t. All right, let's see if we can use some of these ideas to solve this initial value problem. So we will go ahead and take the Laplace transform of each term. Remembering the formula for the Laplace transform for y double prime, it's going to have an s squared y minus an s uh, at y naught and then minus y prime at zero. And the Laplace transform for y prime is sy minus y evaluated at zero. And then the uh, Laplace transform of t squared e to the 3t, e to the 3t tells me that we've got a shift of 3 along the s axis. And the uh, Laplace transform of just t squared would be 2 factorial over s cubed. So we just need to apply that shift. And then I will substitute our given initial values in. And that gives me that y is, uppercase y is going to be 2s plus 5 over s minus 3 quantity squared plus 2 over s minus 3 to the power 5. Now, we worked out in example two the inverse Laplace transform of the first term. So I'm just going to copy that from example two. What do we do about uh, this term? Well, the way that we should think of that, uh, we can bring the two out in front. And that's really one over s to the five, where s has been replaced with s minus three. And so, uh, Let's make that look like the t to the power of 4 Laplace transform. I need a 4 factorial on the top. So I'll go ahead and multiply in by 4 factorial and then divide by 4 factorial. And so how do we handle the shift? Well, that means that we're going to have a multiplier of e to the shift times t. And our shift here is positive 3. So these two terms I just copied from example two, and then two over four factorial, it gives me the one twelfth. The e to the three t comes from the shift of three units, and t to the fourth is the uh, inverse Laplace transform of four factorial over s to the power of five.